Hi, I'm Carolyn Mullen. I'm the Chief of Government Affairs and Public Relations at ASTO. Today, I'm joined by Emily Hulubowicz, who's the Senior Vice President at CRD Associates, who's gonna talk about a new campaign, Data Elemental to Health. Emily, can you tell us more about this campaign? What inspired you? to start it. Well, first, thank you to you, Carolyn, and to ASTO for having me here um, to talk more about this campaign during National Public Health Week. Um, we're really excited, and I think I've worked on advocacy for data in public health for at least a decade. Um, and really, I'd say last year, we had this epiphany that we, we do things in a very siloed, piecemeal way, and we have made some progress in moving from paper-based to electronic systems, but not enough. Um, and that to really move public health surveillance into the 21st century, we need a big, bold, coordinated initiative to really give public health the resources they need to modernize their IT infrastructure so we can have real-time, integrated, seamless exchange and collection of data to improve public health. That's really exciting. Um, how much do you think this will cost? How much are you asking for this year? And I heard it's about a $100 million for FY20 with the goal of reaching a billion dollars over 10 years. That's right. So, um, and you know, some of this I think is based on experience looking at, you know, 10 years ago, this is now the 10th anniversary of high tech, which was $40 billion to build electronic health records nationwide. Um, seeing what we've built so far in public health for electronic lab reporting, syndromic surveillance, vital records, moving electronic, and now um, the really exciting movement and possibilities around electronic case reporting that is drawing information directly from electronic health records and providing that information to public health to make decisions at a population level in real time. Um, we came up with a billion dollars over 10 years. Um, but with the caveat that I think we really see that as sort of a lot of funding, the predominance of that funding being um, front loaded um, to build the infrastructure. Um, what we also know and we've learned from systems, both in public health and in healthcare, that they require uh, consistent modernization um, we, you know, every month we get a new iOS update on our iPhones or on our Androids that we have a new operating system. The same is true um, for IT systems that share data. And so we see um, really kind of in the first five years, the bulk of that funding being used to build the platform at CDC to receive electronic data from states and helping states build up their electronic infrastructures. And then in the out years, um, having some level of funding to help sustain that and making sure we're keeping pace with new technology and we're modernizing those systems. Um, investing in IT infrastructure is not a one and done. Um, you have to plan for that future as technology continues to change. The other part of this campaign that's essentially important is that um, while systems are needed, um, the data that those systems provide are only as good as the people who know how to use the data and interpret it. So building up the informatics workforce in public health is a real um, pillar and really a foundation of this campaign um, that we need a 21st century workforce in public health who know how to do data analytics, who know how to code, who are specialized in cybersecurity. Um, and so really they're um, building up that workforce is sort of central to this campaign as well. So it's about a um, billion dollars to support the systems mm -hmm. and computers and technology, mm -hmm. but also the people that then are gonna be using the data that this new fully integrated interoperable electronic space is going to yield. So you're not doing this work by yourself. Um, there's a lot of partners involved. Can you tell us more about the partners and what's the reception then like on Capitol Hill where you're talking to members of Congress about it? That's a great question. So yes, um, you do not secure a billion dollars overnight for public health doing anything by yourself. Um, so we're really excited uh, with myself. Uh, I represent here in Washington, both uh, the Council of State and Territorial Epi Epidemiologists or CSDE and NAFSIS that represents the vital records jurisdictions, both ASTO affiliates, um, as well as working with my colleagues at the Association of Public Health Laboratories and HIMSS, the Healthcare Information Management System Society of, um, that represents all the different HIT vendors. Um, and we are kind of the, if you will, the co-leads on this effort. 
um, that are putting in the resources and working really hard um, to move this initiative forward, but also to coordinate and do outreach to the broader community. Um, we did a letter up to Capitol Hill about the need to invest in public health IT and data systems. Um, we had 80 organizations sign on, including ASTO, um, including the National Associations of County and City Health Officials, um, as well as some unusual suspects. I've been, I do a lot of sign-on letters. I've been an advocate for 20 years and I've done a lot of letters and I've never had um, Intermountain Healthcare SAP and the Epilepsy Foundation all on one letter. So I think the reception in the community is really exciting. I think everyone has always complained, as long as I've been doing this, about the need for more, better, faster data so we can make better decisions. Um, public health can't function without data. That's why data is elemental to health. Um, and I think people recognize the way we've done this in this sort of siloed approach in building up at CDC new systems, I call them the pop-ups. Oh, Zika's a problem, let's create a Zika surveillance system. Oh, AFM's a problem, the president's requesting funding to prop up a new AFM system. Instead of building on this fragmented siloed infrastructure, what if we kind of took a step back and said, let's build the multi-lane interstate on which all of these different cars, the opioid car, the AFM car, the Zika car, can all ride. Um, and let's do that now um, when we know we've got the technology, we know what works, we've seen it working, um, we just need the resources to make it happen. So we're really excited about that. And I think that's resonating on Capitol Hill. I'm actually quite surprised, you know, uh, again, I've been doing this a long time, and going into this, I knew this was going to be an uphill battle. Um, it feels like everything's working against us. Uh, this is a big ticket item. It's a new initiative in that no one's ever thought of building an infrastructure in this way. Um, it's also kind of wonky. Um, data in general and systems aren't exactly sexy <laughs> and, and exciting for people. Um, but you know, part of what I think has made this resonate on Capitol Hill is sort of people do not realize sort of how primitive and antiquated our current infrastructure is. Um, as we've kind of pulled back that curtain and shared the stories of what it is like to be in a public health department and have a lead crisis um, happening in a community, but you're not able to give the community answers because you've got a stack of paper lead reports on your desk that you've yet to manually data enter into your legacy system. And then to share that information with CDC, you have to fill out their PDF form or their Excel spreadsheet and send that back and forth. This is a 21st century. You know, I can get the NCAA bracket stats on my phone mm -hmm. by just pulling up an app. We have to be able to do that in public health. And we, again, we know what works. We know how to do it. Mm -hmm. We just need the resources to build it. Um, and I think that's resonating on Capitol Hill. Frankly, they've been kind of shocked. They had no idea just how rooted public health still is in faxing, emailing, <laughs> PDF forms. We heard stories during the lettuce outbreak, people taking pictures with their phone of lab results and texting them to the public health department. This is crazy. Um, in the 21st century, we should be able to do this. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think policymakers are really excited. Um, Janet Hamilton, formerly of the Department of Public Health in Florida, and now the Director of Science and Policy at CSDE, has been invited to testify next week before the Labor HHS Appropriations Subcommittee. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the fact that we were picked is among hundreds of people who wanted to testify is really exciting, and mm -hmm. I think a good indicator that um, people are interested in this issue. And I think they are familiar with these arguments from, um, you know, issues 10 years ago around paper-based medical records. Mm -hmm. um, and they put money into that to fix it. And so they know, they understand the issues around provider burden, inefficiencies, inaccuracies in manual reporting and sharing of data. Um, so all of that is kind of resonating. So mm -hmm. I've been surprised it's actually been not as hard of a sell as I thought it would be as we started out on this journey. Right. But where the rubber meets the road is when we actually see it get included in either the House uh, Labor, Health and Human Services and Education Appropriation Bill or the Senate 
uh, LHHS bill, which we will most likely see um, sometime this yeah. summer. So we will uh, learn more then um, whether the advocacy campaign worked. Um, wish you a lot of success. And um, as you know, data is elemental to help. So we're really excited to be part of this campaign um, with our affiliates. So thank you for your time today. Thank you, Carolyn. And thank you, Asto, for your support of this effort. Great.